Let's start with CIA part one course uh, unit three um, as part of the uh, series in which I'm trying to give you the basic understanding of the all the key concepts of CIA part one, two and uh, three subsequently. But we started our journey with part one and today uh, we are here with the unit three uh, uh, which uh, uh, which entitled as governance. So we will discuss about uh, what is governance, what is corporate social responsibility in the entire unit, and the role of internal audit in governance, what is the board uh, role in the governance and the management role as well. So this is the overall uh, syllabus which we will be covering in, the, in this unit. Uh, so let's move on to the next slide. This is a brief introduction about myself. Uh, I wouldn't be repeating again uh, who I am and what my experience is. Uh, if you are interested, you can pause the slide and you can uh, read it yourself. Uh, so here we are with the overall snapshot of what we have covered, what we will be covering today and what is remaining. Um, in the CIA part one course, um, the, the governance in itself it covers around 10% of the entire syllabus, which means approximately 13 MCQs out of 125 MCQs in the exam will appear from this section, from this unit. It's very simple. Um, all you need to know is the basic to develop the basic understanding, and then apply those concepts in different scenarios in the MCQs. Uh, in the previous units, what we have covered is the foundation of internal audit, in which basically we we talk about more about the internal audit standard, which is known as IPPF, and uh, some other uh, recommended guidance. Um, we have other documents in I, uh, which explains our standards and then we also discuss about the code of ethics and lastly in the unit one we discuss about the internal audit charter. In the previous unit which was unit two we talk about multiple key uh, concepts which are very much relevant to the internal audit uh, from the practical work experience wise and from the syllabus wise as well. The most significant point in the unit two was that it covers 40% of the entire syllabus, which means 50 MCQs out of 125 comes from the unit two of uh, GLIM, uh, in which we cover independence, objectivity. Uh, we discuss what is the difference between independence and objectivity. We talk about proficiency uh, and competence. We talk about due professional care, quality assurance and improvement program. So the entire unit revolves around these concepts. In our today's uh, discussion, we will be talking about uh, governance, basically corporate governance. And secondly, uh, about what is CSR, corporate social responsibility. As always, I try to have a mind map for the entire chapter just to see on one page what are the key concepts and how it relates to uh, key topics within the chapter or within the unit. So this is a snapshot. Once you have gone through the, um, the text and skimmed through the text and have listened to the lecture, uh, you can just keep this as a mind map which will give you a high level of understanding that what you have covered. Here we are with our first topic of uh, this unit, uh, which is governance. Uh, before I go into the formal definition of governance, uh, I just want to give you, um, in, or try, I would like to explain it to you in simple term, what is corporate governance? So corporate governance, this, the word in itself is broken down into two words. Corporate mean a company and governance mean um, how we, how effectively we are running the company. 
So any system or rules or regulation or structure uh, by which we are running the company and if those are being considered as a benchmark or legal requirement to do in, in the right way um, in, the, in the business uh, dealing, then it means we are running the company as per good corporate governance. Uh, so this is a basic definition. Uh, there are multiple definitions of corporate governance in different uh, guidelines, uh, in different codes, uh, corporate governance code in different uh, part of the world. Um, but the one which uh, we have to be very specific about is what the IPPF or the standard says. Uh, it gave us the definition we will go through quickly uh, it says the process and the structure implemented by the board to inform direct manage and monitor the organizational activities to achieve its objective so the processes and the, first of all the processes what are the process processes are basically uh, a subunit of a de department so all the department to achieve their objective they have different processes and how those departments are being structured so that's um, that in itself is part or element of a corporate governance uh, who are the um, ultimate responsible people to look after governance is the board and how they are being informed direct and how the management is managing and monitor and how they are the board and the management are monitoring all the organizational activities basically that all encompasses the uh, governance framework for the entire organization in simple terms i would say how effectively you are running the company this is this this is what it means like good corporate governance and uh, just to give you in a brief snapshot so whenever we talk about corporate governance first of all there is no one set rules that how a company should be run in different part of the world there are different uh, guidelines or framework which has been given to the companies as per their local needs or as per the legislation or the uh, the, uh, the legal environment in that country that how they are supposed to run that company why we need a set of rules and regulations or guidelines for the company to run because those who are running the company they do not own the company they are basically a representative of the shareholders the people who own the company they are usually sitting outside the company who are the shareholders and these shareholders they give them authority to run the company on their behalf so in order to ensure the um, to ensure the um, uh, save or to safeguard the interest of the shareholder uh, the legal uh, framework within a country they give certain guidelines to the management uh, or the governing body to run their company in a way that it is not only beneficial to the shareholder but it is also working as intended by or as intended by the government or in in the in the to help the society and to help different stakeholders because in one company in itself is having it's, it's an ecosystem because that company might be someone's supplier or they might be receiving some uh, materials or, uh, or some supplies from someone they might be um, have payments to make to someone or someone has to make a payments to them um, again the profit eventually lead to tax uh, payments to the uh, to the government uh, they employ people so people are involved um, the company run in their operation in a manner that might have a detrimental impact to the community or society in terms of vestiges or in terms of environmental hazards so how efficiently they are running their operations uh, are they meeting the society needs or not? So there is a lot of risk involved. Therefore, uh, they are being mandated, uh, mostly voluntary, but if the organization is big and is public listed company, so it becomes even mandatory for them to follow the corporate governance guideline. 
this uh, presentation might be slightly bigger but uh, it is important to have a very good understanding of corporate governance because i've seen a lot of people even sitting at a very strategic level within the company they confuse these concepts and based on my experience i want you people to understand at the very basic level what is corporate governance so now you understand what is corporate governance so corporate governance is affected by in the, the two factors which influence it's either be internal which is how the, you form the board the internal audit department the risk management department the charters audit committee internal audit charter risk charter bylaws bylaws are um, article and memorandum of association of the company why they the company exists and how they will run policies and procedure this is also an internal factor which affects the organization delegation of authority so these are all factors internally which influence the corporate governance from external its laws and regulation mainly uh, also sometimes it's the society also which directs uh, yeah, what their expectation is from the company uh, in terms of governance principle um, whenever someone asks you about the governance there are key fundamentals to the um, corporate governance which are how the governance risk and control frameworks is implemented within the company how they are managing their risk how is the board formed who are the member of the board are they independent uh, directors or they are um, dependent or executive directors um, what is the strategy what is the plan what is the objective delegation of authority how the reporting mechanism work within the company um, how they are evaluating the performance of the company who's looking at the company is there is an internal audit is happening within the company external audit is happening within the company are there uh, regulatory compliance checks being carried out on the company um, what is the ethical culture is there is zero tolerance for fraud and um, uh, misbehavior um, what about the gender equality what about the employing uh, not employing minority uh, no minors uh, not m minority means like has but mi minors means under 18 people uh, child labor which I means how is the hygienic environment within the company um, is there is any conflict of interest th those people who are running the company do they have any vested interests which conflicts with the company maybe they start selling something to the company they um, they employ their families members within the company without proper due marital um, or through compliance with the policies and procedures related party transaction where people try to take benefit or the company from the company through any means by selling buying providing services without even disclosing it or following their proper uh, protocols which are being defined in the policies and procedures so these are all the matters which affects the organization uh, governance framework board responsibility okay in in as i have mentioned you that, that the board is ultimately responsible for the uh, proper governance framework within the company and in order to ensure that the board uh, dedicates some of their board members in the form of audit committee to look on the governance aspect of the company and that audit committee they hire internal audit and external audit uh, um, external auditors um, they propose external auditors and they hire internal auditors to look deep into the operations of the company to assess whether everything is happening as per the policies and procedures laws and regulations and accordingly they they try to uh, give an assurance to the board and then eventually the board shed their responsibility in front of the shareholders so this is how the cycles work um, there are key responsibility in, in, in regards to the board response uh, board uh, uh, or the, the the key decisions which the board take first of all they give direction and oversight uh, provide oversight to the company so the the management also look towards the board in terms of what direction or what they want from the management to achieve uh, then capital structure means the board take all the strategic decisions like uh, how the funding will be made through 
um, through equity or through getting a loan. So these structures are also important. Um, bylaws, where, why the company exists, wh what kind of activities the company will be involved in. If there is any fundamental change, maybe a significant investments into or buying, selling, divestments. So these are significant uh, changes which also being uh, approved or disapproved by the board or look into by the board. The board uh, subcommittee basically, uh, uh, we call it NRC, Nomination and Remuneration Committee. And they look into the key executive management, their compensation, so that it is aligned with the expectation and there is no uh, overriding of responsibility and they they work in the best interest of the wider stakeholders uh, risk and audit activities so obviously the governance framework requires that there is proper check and balances and risk are being managed properly and uh, dividends as well that once the company take the profit how much it needs to be distributed among the shareholders. So this is just a few example of what the board responsibility is towards properly governing the company. Uh, the board to shed off their responsibility, not to shed off basically to, to have a deeper look into certain area of the businesses. They form different committees. Um, some of the, I mean, prominent committees are Audit Committee, Risk Committee, Nomination and Remuneration Committee, uh, Compliance Committee at times we have. Um, so there are different types of committee, Ethics Committee we have. So these committee basically look deeper into the area of each responsibility and uh, there are certain uh, people from the management that who who provide a detailed level of reports to them on that particular area, and then these committee basically, uh, if there is anything significant, they highlight to the board, and uh, accordingly the board manage on key critical areas within the company. The reason to have all these committees is basically the board says four times a year, and they have a lot of agenda in the board meeting to discuss on. So to give more preference and dedicate their time. So some of the, uh, the board members are being chosen for different committees and these committees, they report back uh, to them. So uh, why we are talking about corporate governance? Have you, have you wondered up till now? The reason is because when we do internal audit, basically we are giving an assurance on the governance framework within the company to the uh, board or audit committee uh, and governance is one of the key embedded component in our definition in our internal audit definition uh, it states that to evaluate and improve the effectiveness of risk management control and co and governance processes so this is one of the key responsibility uh, of internal audit uh, if the organization has not evolve enough to have a proper governance framework where they have like proper structured board committees um, role and responsibilities are defined policies and procedures are there, reporting framework performance management not all companies are that mature so in that case the role of internal audit in those companies where there is not so much of maturity in terms of corporate governance to ensure compliance with the best practices and policies and procedures and laws. However, if an organization is already being highly regulated and they have all these different um, elements of the good corporate governance, there our role is to, further, to optimize from that systems and structures and find best uh, economies of scale or we can come up with the innovative ideas by which we enable the organization to achieve its objective even in in a much better way so then we have to use as a basis basis of this uh, corp good corporate governance to further take one step ahead and uh, to let the company to think about the future risk how they can beat the competition and all as part of internal audit activity Board and management role, basically uh, the board um, provides <coughs> direction to the company. <coughs> Sorry, 
and the management is responsible for implementing a good corporate governance within the company in terms of <clears throat> policies and procedures in terms of uh, systems in terms of uh, ethical tone from the top so this is all the management and responsibility um internal audit and okay what is this point internal audit assess and make improvement recommendation improve the governance okay how we play our role uh, we play our role by over seeing sorry the, the, there is a type of error overseeing not overseeing overseeing risk and control framework uh, promoting ethical values ensuring performance management so basically this is all which i have given you an example like even by helping in, in through consultancy services we can enable the company to to have a proper good governance because then we guide the management that how they can improve their control environment um so this is uh, any any activity of internal audit basically uh, the the root of internal audit in itself is to help the organization achieve a good corporate governance and to give an assurance that things are happening in the best possible manner within the company. Uh, CSR is the other point um, where uh, which covers which is uh, which is part of this unit. CSR is corporate social responsibility. So basically what happened that initially the company were mainly formed to maximize the wealth of shareholder by giving them better profit. Then with the evolution, um, the society felt that the companies are not playing their role properly because there were some fraud scandals. Some companies were cheating the society or consumers. Uh, and and eventually what happened that there was a lot of um, push from the from the society from the regulators that these companies behavior needs to be regulated in an ethical manner where they are not only responsible for the shareholder to 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 maximize their wealth but rather they also have a responsibility to our employees because if a company is involved in wrongdoing and tomorrow it, it has to liquidate then these employees who are working for the company they will be unemployed and eventually it will have an impact in, on the society or if the company is not pro, um, making a, a healthy product or a product which is use, uh, beneficial to the society then it will have a societal impact if a company is involved in an operation where their byproduct or their waste could have a detrimental impact on the environment, then um, that could be an issue. So there are a lot of uh, this, uh, these, the, there, there were a lot of these kind of reasons for which uh, CSR, uh, yeah, this corporate social responsibility concepts evolved. And eventually now we are standing where most of the companies are being expected to have a good corporate citizenship, especially those who are very big in size and listed companies. Um, but still, it's a, it's a it's a evolving area. There is a lot of need to further mature this area. However, uh, given the current scenario, whatever we have in terms of we can use that I'll, I'll mention in the uh, in the in this slide and upcoming slide that what the company can use for now but it is still uh, an evolving area there is still a lot of debate and there is still a lot of gray area involved uh, CSR uh, have multiple definition it has been defined in different corporate governance codes or guidance uh, in a different way uh, the one which is more relevant to us is IIA practice guide which says that uh, a firm basically a, a company integrate social environmental economical concerns so previously it was only economical so now it is two more addition to it social and environmental into their values culture decision making strategy and operation in a transparent and accountable manner and thereby establish better practices with the firm create wealth and improve society so it's it's not only about wealth maximization but also how to improve the society ISO has its own Archie there was this guy who also has given some um, definition of CSR 
so so there is a different angle by which everyone has tried to capture what csr basically meant the key characteristic of csr is is basically uh, revolves around social responsibility sustainable development and corporate citizenship what is corporate citizenship it's similar to the individual citizenship where an individual is responsible to behave in ethical manner be good to the society follow the laws and regulation similarly a company which uh, which uh, which reside in any country or any geography or even globally a multinational company they have to have that citizenship kind of uh, mentality where they are a contributing member to the society sustainable development the uh, is where we do not overuse the resources that our future generation might not have uh, or might be affected or might not be able to enjoy those resources for example a global warming is affecting and and it's it will have a devastating effect on our coming generation or maybe we might be using certain kind of resources at a very high rate which might eventually lead to depletion uh, on the globe and might affect others um, so these kind of things uh, a company needs to be very much of mindful stakeholder expectations so uh, stakeholders uh, are the people who might directly or indirectly affect by the operations of the company so organization accept responsibility to manage their effects on the environment and, st and stakeholder engage stakeholder in their effort and report the results to the public so what are the stakeholder expectation basically they want them first of all the the company in itself take initiative where they manage uh, if there is any any detrimental impact or try to enhance the positive uh, impact on the society uh, engage different uh, different uh, stakeholders of the society be it employees be it um, local um, government authorities or maybe the country level um, so environmentalist scientists these all people needs to be engaged and the results of their activities and how they are helping and contributing towards the society that needs to be publicly reported so they know uh, what the company is doing and how they are helping and and sharing of their responsibility also as a corporate citizenship CSR is still largely voluntary except for a few public listed companies or certain kind of companies which deals in a very sensitive area for example companies which are in oil or drilling uh, kind of uh, operations or companies for example nuclear program if there is a company uh, which deals with nuclear energy so that company needs a very strong CSR uh, to minimize their environmental impact um, so the this kind of m m uh, pharmaceutical again very big uh, it their, their small mistake could be a, a big uh, consequences to the to the world or to the society so that where we have to have a strong CSR reporting uh, so according to the Archie there are four key CSR responsibilities economic legal ethical and ph philanthropist so these are the four key elements of a CSR which we need to encompass as a company in our day-to-day um, -day activities in our decision makings uh, in, in regards to the uh, achievement of the organizational objectives uh, in terms of frameworks uh, so if let's say you have a company and they wanted to embark on the CSR journey what are the resources that is available to them um, if they want to implement and manage they can take the guidance from ISO 26000 if they need a reporting mechanism they can follow global reporting initiative CGI and if they want to have a certification for the loss making or injuries or waste management they can go for ISO 14000 so these are some of the frameworks which are available in the market um, the key risk related to CSR is loss of reputation the company if they make any bigger environmental or societal uh, problem 
uh, then there could be a lot of um, ripples from the society it's a loss of reputation non-compliant they might be um, their, their waste or their chemicals which they discharge might um, might not follow the regulatory requirements or the legal requirements so that lead to a non-compliance or lawsuits so that could uh, happen operational failure um, that could also uh, uh, happen because um, if we do not have a proper health and safety within the company so that that can that can happen as well environmental effects obviously wastages as i've told you co2 dangerous gases if you release in the in the in the environment without without um, trying to reduce their impact so that could happen stock market obviously they they work or stock market works on the news so if there is a bad publicity about the company the the share uh, price of the company might fluctuate employment market obviously if there is a government ban or they put um, seize the company's operation due to any non-compliance then employability could be an issue uh, sales and consumer behavior is basically where people become so aware that they do not want to associate themselves with any company or any product which are not ethical so these are the key elements or key risk which one has to be mindful the responsibility so board has their overseeing responsibility of csr activities management is supposed to implement and manage auditor provide an assurance and by assessing that whether the company the the management is achieving their objective csr objectives or not and reporting uh, in a transparent manner or not uh, employee each and every employee is responsible for the success of csr so it's not one person responsibility it's a collective everyone responsibility um, if you are intending to go for an csr audit the things which you can look into is governance aspect how the overall governance uh, whether be it's a corporate governance because csr is also about being transparent and accountable that is happening within the company or not or csr activity that's uh, in, in specific as well uh, commun commune communal investments that how much they are investing maybe by putting setting aside some of the profit within the company to to work towards social activities maybe building schools for orphans or sponsoring certain events these kind of a thing uh, social and environmental matters so this is again the same whether they are trying to treat their waste and disposals uh, to not let the environment getting affected by or trying to reduce their em emission level uh, they are also being transparent whether the company is transparent in in terms of corruption they have proper controls and anti-fraud uh, measures health and safety and security of the employees and people where they are having operations uh, transparency in itself is clear human rights and working conditions so these are all part of the key elements which you might make part of your scope engagement whenever you are intending to carry out a csr audit Uh, CSR um, okay who are our stakeholders generally our stakeholder are customers employees environment uh, communities shareholders suppliers um, government authorities um, so there could be multiple but these are just a few example CSR reporting so whenever you are doing a CSR reporting or the company which are doing CSR reporting they have to ensure that they carry out a proper cost benefit analysis that they uh, the, the reporting itself should not defeat the purpose the objective of helping the society so our reporting should not become so expensive where our initiative and might look like small petty in front of it so cost benefit analysis is important relevant information is also important that we provide the relevant information to the our stakeholders so they better assess our uh, social like, activities 
the company should have an internal audit which provide and verify and provide assurance so by this the stakeholders will have better reliance on the information provided reports and communication methods so that is also important that there should be a concise report and it could be in the form of a booklet online press release regulatory filing or any other mean CSR activity of within the company can be measured through a uh, capability maturity model which basically uh, defines it's, it's a model generic model which can be used in different scenarios but it can just give you an idea that uh, you, you try to map the CSR activities or the CSR if you have a department a department uh, from level one to level five level one is the very basic level and level five is the very advanced level um, and what each level encompasses is basically here defined so whether we are at a very primal uh, stage within the company or the company is now having a proper policies and procedures now they have to manage these CSR activities uh, whether the proper KPIs and all are defined and uh, being evaluated or not quantitatively managed or not and then the last one is uh, optimization means that where we always try to keep uh, improving our uh, operational activities to to further enhance through innovation or to better uh, get a better results so this is a model generic model which you can use as a guide to assess the CSR activities within the company and let's say if it according to your understanding if it falls in level three so you can give a recommendation that how the company can achieve level four and five and the management should push on that um, their, their employees as well here we are at the end of our presentation and thank you for for all your patience and I hope that this explanation would help you to get to, to, to prepare for your CIA part one exam and unit and especially the unit three. Um, if you benefited from, please do not hesitate to share with other people to also get benefit um, and like and subscribe uh, to the channel for further videos, which I will be posting as, as part of the series one, part one of CIA exam preparation. Uh, take care and hope to see you in the next video.